that would love to hear your thoughts on loving your body through all phases of life. This is so important. Hey guys, it's Jazz. Welcome back. Today I am going to be doing a video talking about self-love. The idea originally came from Franny and I was going to do this video with Franny and Neza, but it's just not going to work out with timing wise and schedule wise, but they're here with me in spirit and that is all that matters. So I did a video like this on Franny's channel probably like two years ago and it was me, her, Emily, and Neza and we we're all sitting together removing our makeup and just answering your guys' questions and just talking about the importance of self-love. But today I'm going to be doing that by myself. I'm not going to be removing my makeup. I just don't have makeup on to begin with. I have been through a journey. Come here, poopy. Okay. And you want to be on the journey of self-love too? So I've been on an extreme journey with my self-love and I am not by any means like a self-love queen. Like I still have my ups and downs of insecurities and low self-esteem, but I also have improved so much and have become so much more of a positive thinker. And I just thought it would be nice to talk to you guys really transparently and candidly about my journey and just read some of the things that you guys submitted on Instagram. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is here on the screen for you guys. And yeah, I think it'll be just like a nice little girly chit chat kind of like a big sister bonding because I've never been a big sister so I feel like I get to do that now also I would like to quickly thank Curology for sponsoring today's video a huge part of the reason that my skin is looking as clear as it is Duke is begging for my attention right now so let's go ahead and jump into that and then I'll be back as mentioned, today's video is sponsored by Curology. I have been using their products for the last two months now. I am so blown away at how much of a transformation my skin has undergone since I started using Curology's products. So my skin has had a tidal wave of ups and downs when it comes to blemishes, acne, dark spots, wrinkles. I'm 26, I'm at the very early stages, but wow, my skin is changing in many ways. I started using Curology about two months ago when my skin was looking like this. I was getting a lot of cheek breakouts and surprisingly enough I realized that it was coming from face masks makeup and face masks and dairy it was a combination of things okay but I feel like it really got worse when face masks obviously became a requirement and it was just causing a lot of these well I don't have them anymore but it was just causing a lot of unwanted breakouts on my cheeks and it was also causing me to get some really strong clogged pores on my forehead so your girl decided to get her skincare routine right I started using the Curology cleanser this is now my second bottle of this and of course the moisturizer which this is also my second bottle of this it is amazing but most importantly I have my own little prescription style face cream that I put on my face every night that was given to me by a dermatology provider when you sign up for Curology you take a quiz based off of your skin type some of your problem areas and then through that they connect you with the dermatology provider who will help come up with a cream for your skin to work on the areas that you struggle with you're able to communicate with them on the website and message them they can make changes to your cream depending on how your skin is improving. You upload progress pictures. It is just such a amazing platform for improving your skin. You guys saw the before pictures. This is where my skin is at now. As you can see, extreme improvement. I am going through a little bit of like just clearing of dark spots here, but these were all active breakouts before. Now it's just some dark spots that we're trying to get rid of. And then this side is obviously just seeing tremendous improvement. So, and on top of that, look at my forehead. I don't see any clogged pores smooth as a button so the next thing I need to do is talk to my provider about just clearing up my dark spots because that really seems to be the only focus we need now with my skin clearing up I'm feeling like 10 times more confident and just like when you have clear skin you just feel good thank you Curology I've been using this face wash I use it twice a day once in the morning and once before bed when I'm taking off my makeup put on the cream and then I use my moisturizer twice a day as well so if you guys would like to try out Curology for yourself you can get a free trial all you have to pay for is shipping and handling, which is only $4.95 to potentially help you go on this amazing skin journey and create such a healthy skin relationship with your skin, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I highly recommend it. So again, thank you so much to Curology for sponsoring today's video. And let's get on with this freaking video with Franny and Neza. <laughs> and welcome back. All right, so I have a variety of things. Oopsie Toopsie said, I would love to hear your thoughts on loving your body through all phases of life. This is so important. For those of you that are new, you may not know, I used to be extremely into fitness. I was really into powerlifting. I used to be really, really strong. I've gone through phases of being anorexic, genuinely anorexic, like 85 pounds. I have had my eating disorder phase. I have had a binging phase, gained a ton of weight after my binging phase, bikini 
person or a bikini competitor, then I stop training and right now I'm in this phase where I work out maybe like two or three times a week. I do it really just to maintain health at this point. It is so important to love your body through all of those phases and I would be lying if I sat here and told you that I went through it all very easily and I loved my body through every phase. No, I tore myself to shreds pretty much the whole way. It was a little bit harder because I did have the public eye so opinionated and telling me everything that was wrong with my body on a regular basis and that made it really hard because it was my first time being exposed to judgment like that. I was a, just a regular person who wasn't on social media for a long time. We're all regular people and I I feel like sometimes people who follow these accounts forget that we're human too and that we feel things and so you know they just be like does she realize that she has a belly roll sticking out or god she's been working out for two years and we see no improvements they're commenting this on my pictures it's my profile like I'm seeing these things and it hurts it hurts so much now I'm in a phase where I just truly love my body the way that it is and of course like would I like to put on a little more muscle or like I have my phases where I'm on my period and I'm like ooh, I can't wait till I'm not bloated anymore but I love myself the entire entire freaking time. Everybody's journey for that is gonna be different. For myself, it was once I started spending a lot of time alone, I would just look in the mirror and I was like, man, you're pretty beautiful just the way that you are. And why did you ever let anyone make you think otherwise? I think positive affirmations, journaling, spending some time in your mirror, the, the classic putting post-its of like, you're beautiful, I love your smile, those things so that you could look at them and really get yourself to believe it because we are all so beautiful through every phase of our body stage and you deserve to know that and you deserve to feel that and see that and experience experience that. Ooh, somebody sent a quote from Kendrick and said, you gotta learn to love yourself because in this world that's the realest love you will get. Amen. That is the truth. Someone said, uh, what do you do for your self-care days? For my off days where I just don't see anybody and I just truly focus on like recharging and preparing myself for a new week, I typically do this on Sundays, but I have to prepare for Hot Rose launch on Sunday, so not this Sunday, but typically I will allow myself to sleep in. I'll make myself a cup of coffee once I get up, take my dogs for their little walk, then I'll come back inside. I usually make myself some oatmeal. I do a face mask, I sit down, I binge Netflix for like two or three hours, watch some movies, play Best Fiends. I don't know why I'm still obsessed with that game. I'm like on level 900 now. It's not gonna stop anytime soon. And then I will take a bath at the end of the night. I'll usually soak in some bath salts or in a bubble bath and I will sit in there for like an hour and read and listen to lo-fi music and meditate. I will be in there for a long time and I do lots of different things. I don't have the water running the whole time. I just like let it fill up and then I just sit there and I just soak and I light a candle and I turn off the lights and it is just perfect every time. And then by the end of it, after a bath, you're usually really sleepy. I don't know why hot water lulls you to sleep. I go into my bed. I maybe watch a little more Netflix or I read. I try to read a self-help book before bed. And I know people have mixed opinions about self-help books. I don't really know why. At the end of the day, it's a book that's helping you have more positive like thinking. I don't know. I used to get a lot of hate. People were like, why are you talking about self-help books? And I'm like, because they're great. Why not? Yeah, that is pretty much my self-care routine. It's not anything too crazy. Just really pampering myself for a day and taking care of me and my needs for one day and one day only just me and my pups. Lorena said, I just want to say that yoga has absolutely saved my mental health during this time. I love that for you. I'm not surprised to hear that. Yoga was a huge thing for me when I was extremely, extremely anxious and staying in bed crying because I was so afraid to go out and face the world. Yoga, I started doing yin meditation, which is a very, very soft version of yoga. It's not actually really like doing warrior pose or anything like that. It's really like the Shavasana stage. You do that for an hour and oh my god it was the one time where I could actually feel my body just relax and feel relief for that hour and usually for another hour after that yoga is absolutely such a life changer and if you're somebody who's struggling with your mental health I would recommend trying out yoga a lot of therapists recommend it as well there's not really any bad thing that can come from trying it out Joe said there is nothing I love that people are just submitting random quotes and stuff too Joe said there's nothing in this world that can trouble you as much as your own thoughts Facts, baby, 1,000, Duke, he's being a lot right now. Emily Noel said, fake it to make it or just deal with the self-esteem you got at the moment. So I wanna say fake it to make it, right? Because if you fake it, eventually at some point you should believe it. But I also think that you should deal with the self-esteem that you have at the moment and try to figure out why you're feeling that way. Did someone say something to you at a young age to make you get into your head about this? Are you just picking on yourself? Are you comparing yourself? Like, what's the situation? Because I think that sometimes if you just fake it, you're not actually making yourself believe it. You have have to believe
believe that you're beautiful. You don't want to fake it because I feel like at the end of the day that just can end up hurting you more. I could be wrong. Someone else might be like, no, that's horrible advice. Like, fake it till you make it. But to me, I'm like, I'm someone that wants to get down to the root cause of why I feel this way and really try and nurture that root because that's where the trauma first happened. And so it's like, you've got this root at the very bottom and here's all of the soil and you're up here and you're just like, oh, I'll fake it to here, right? Because they're only seeing so much. But then this root, these roots down here are still going to keep growing into more deep rooted pain. I don't know if that analogy makes any sense, but I would say deal with the self esteem you have at the moment and work on making that self esteem stronger. We can't be happy with ourselves a thousand percent of the time. It's just we're humans. We have way too many emotions. We're far too complex to just feel one way about ourselves all the time. What's important is always trying to be better than yesterday. Georgie said authenticity over people pleasing. That is self respect. That is 1000% true. I am somebody who has struggled with being my authentic self because I've been afraid of judgment or people thinking that I'm too much or that I'm not too much or that I'm boring or that I'm exciting and I would play it up around the people that I thought liked me when I was played up and then I die it down for the people that I felt thought I was too much when I was playing it up and it made it so that I felt like I didn't even really know who I was anymore and now I just am who I am 100% of the time and people get to see me for me and so people might be like oh you were in such a good mood the other day you were more bubbly and I'm like yeah but today I'm not today I just feel relaxed and today I don't feel like jumping around making jokes and doing bits and doing sketches whatever and then on other days I am I'm that all the way that is not the best example there's obviously more exaggerated examples that I could give but just to be simple and like get straight to the point I totally feel that and you should 1000% always be your authentic self even if you think people won't like it authentic people are the coolest ones think about like rom-coms when the guy is like oh she's just like all the other fish in the sea and then that one artsy girl comes out who's like quirky and crazy and he's like wow how did I never meet you before and she's like I don't know I was always here you just didn't notice me that's like me just making up a movie but there's always that weird girl that just is outspoken and says whatever she wants and she's the one that everyone falls in love with or he be you being you is the best you that you can be a lot of people are asking sadly about how to build up your self-esteem after a breakup and a lot of them are asking about like a toxic breakup only you can take yourself on that journey but I would say the first thing is that it can be very easy to lose yourself in a relationship and to feel like that relationship made up who you are and that is really really awful you don't deserve to feel like that is what makes you up as a person it makes me so sad when I hear people say this so the first thing I would say is go out into the world and explore and find your favorite hobbies that you can do alone you need to build a relationship with you again because your self-esteem is so deep-rooted in this entanglement that you had with your ex-partner who hurt you which is already like ill gross we need to do everything we can to remove this from our body figure out do you love painting even painting by numbers do you like going Going on hikes? Do you like going on long drives or sitting by the ocean? Do you like doing puzzles? Do you like playing video games, reading books? Whatever it is, you need to find what makes you happy that you can do by yourself. And I promise you, I know it sounds so vague and you're like, what is that actually going to do for me in the long run? A lot. It's going to give you the independence that you needed and independence is going to allow you to find love within yourself and to realize that another person's opinion of you or the things that they've said to you or the things that they did to hurt you mean nothing. You can expel them from you because you're you you're independent who really cares what the outside sources say because that's all your exes and outside source vvm and co said how cool is it that the same god who created mountains and oceans and galaxies looked at you and thought the world needed one of you too never forget how amazing you are every time i hear that it actually makes me want to cry that is a common quote i haven't heard it exactly like that but it is kind of like we're all here for a reason you are amazing and if you don't believe in god then think science science also somehow scientifically was like i think this thing can and help science. <laughs> You're here for a reason. Never doubt that. Joanna said, whenever I get my period, I get really insecure about my body and skin. Any suggestions? Girl, I relate. I am 26 and I still break out on my chest before my period. I still get a few breakouts on my cheek before my period. Cheeks. Just one cheek. I'm like, dude, I already went through puberty. Like, why am I still experiencing these breakouts? And I get super bloated and I feel lethargic and awful. The one thing I would say is like, dude, those are your hormones. Like, your hormones are just making you, you know, more emotional, maybe more irritable, and you just gotta kind of ride it out. Do the things that you love. Like, when I'm on my period, I'm not like, I'm not gonna eat chocolate because it's gonna make me break out more. If anything, I'm like, I'm on my period. I'm already breaking out. I'm sad. I have the worst cramps. I have a heavy flow 
flow. All I want is chocolate. Give yourself the things that you want. Give yourself a nice bath. Give yourself one of those self-care days that I talked about earlier. Take care of yourself. Eat the little snacks that you want. It's not gonna ruin any progress if you eat some snacks for three or four days. You know, if you're feeling insecure, remember that you're beautiful. You're just on your period. You're more lethargic. You're more emotional. And it's not gonna last forever. It'll just be back in three weeks. <laughs> Lulu said, stop letting America control your confidence. Facts. Robert Morley, Neza X. Croft uh, submitted this quote, to fall in love with yourself is the first secret to happiness. And Robert Morley said that. Let, what did I just say about the breakup? I said, you need to build a relationship with you. You need to fall in love with you. And I promise that will unlock everything. And I still don't have the best relationship with myself, but I'm working on it every day. I'm telling you, man, once you only care about what you think of you, nothing else really matters. It's not being narcissistic. It's, it's creating this barrier of like the things that would typically really hurt you and destroy you. You don't let that get to you anymore because you are you. How perfect is that? Somebody said tips for overcoming self-sabotage. It can be so cyclical. And someone also talked about imposter syndrome. And that is something that I personally deal with myself. So I don't even feel like I can give proper advice on that. However, if there's anyone watching this that has experienced it and has been able to overcome it, please share some of your advice for people like myself and these people because it is hard. It is something that many of us face, especially when we've had some sort of trauma in our life. So if anyone wants to be so kind and made it this far in the video and wants to share anything, by all means, please, we would all be so grateful. One of the most important people in my life uh, left something and she said, how do you stop the habit of comparing yourself to others? By the way, I love you. You're amazing and gorge. If only you you guys knew who I was talking about, one of the most beautiful spirits I've ever met in my entire life. I still go through this. I still have a habit of comparing myself to others. I don't know why it's so embedded in me. I don't know when it became a thing. I think getting into social media at 19 years old was really, really tough on me mentally. And I only can empathize for the 13 year olds that are so heavily involved in social media now because it does have such a huge impact on the way you view yourself and compare yourself because Instagram is a highlight reel and and people are getting more transparent on here, but it is a highlight reel and it's so easy to be like, why don't I look like that all the time? Not realizing that there's Facetune, that we're editing our pictures, that there's filters, that our makeup might have taken us 12 hours that day, not 12, whatever, like an hour that day, and that we might have hated every picture we took of ourselves until we found the one that we liked. So for me, and I know a lot of people won't agree with this, but it's also something my therapist told me to do, is I started unfollowing the accounts that made me feel awful about myself. And and that's not to say they were going out of their way to make me feel awful. These people don't even know who I am. But it might have been like Kylie Jenner. That's someone I can't follow. I look at her face and I'm just like, where are your pores? Why are you so perfect? How are your photos perfectly lit? Madison Beer is another one. Like these people, we might love them, but you can still love someone and support them within their career by listening to their music or supporting their products or whatever it is without following them. And I think that that's something that we all need to process. So I have people that I cannot follow because it just, I compare myself and I know that it's a habit that I do. So I stop myself in my tracks and I stop following them. And then I have my phases where I can go through and support them and like them. And and it might start again where I'm like, no, I can't do this anymore. I think that's a huge thing is just realizing that they probably went through the same overthinking and overanalyzing that you did. They're also just humans. Remember why you're beautiful. Unfollow them for the time being. Their account will always be there and come back when you're ready. Okay, guys, that's gonna be it for this girls chat, being honest, transparent with you guys video. Really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, throw this video a thumbs up. That would mean so much. It helps me know if you guys like this type of content. If you guys want me to do another one of these again someday, just comment that down below. If we can get this to 1500 likes, then I will do another one of these at some point. So that's it for now. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!